Call me Bob the Workman because I have my work cut out for me in order to give two halves of a third of a damn about this class that I dislike. Since it's the engineer, I will say howdy partner, or rather, how overly wordy do you prefer a rousing discussion normalizing engineer ridicule? This is going to be a big old bitch fest bonanza, fueled by my lack of care, my disinterest, my metaphorical ass, and my physical mouth. Overall, engineer bores me. Now, we're trying to find the best class in TF2. I get that. I understand that. I see that because it's my my own script and I'm the guy spending his afternoons thinking about this dumpy, overall wearing, overall boring class. Here's my novel opinion. I like to be the guy who does the majority of the work in a first person shooter if the class is split between half you, half the various objects that support you, I'm not all over it. Now this is my personal feelings, of course, and I can assure you I won't make my opinions impact how I judge this useless, stupid ass character as we try to find if Engineer is the best class in TF2. For newcomers to this series, I take a class, in this case, Fat Fat Fuck, and judge them in three areas. We disregard the class's characterization because TF2 made every personality memorable and fantastic. I'm interested in a class's casual viability, essentially meaning how good it is against droves of Jose Martinez 2003s or anyone else who has been recently born. Then we move on to competitive viability, which is a steadily dying concept that will be enjoyed by all 50 people who have played the game competitively. Finally, I needed a third section of evaluation, so we'll look at Engineer in the game's PvE game mode, Man vs. Machine. This section will probably be 45 seconds long because really the question is, is Engineer, the guy who builds buildings that support defense, good at the tower defense game mode? I like to begin by looking at the class's equipment choices, of course those being primary, secondary, and melee. <laughs> Sorry, fell the fuck asleep there as I thought about the differences between wrench and wrench that causes bleeding. Okay, so first, the engineer uses shotguns. They are all yes. All of them are good enough for shooting people if your primary source of not going to die in the next moment, help me team, the concept is not dead. That's also known as the sentry gun. Six shots, three shots, infinite shots, all fine for the fan of actually shooting things in a first person shooter. The secondary slot is probably the most dynamic of the three equipment types, which is funny because there's the least number of variety within the category. You have a pistol. There is a $500 prize if someone can tell the class what pistols are usually used for. Then you have the the Wrangler, which gives you manual control over your sentry gun component, which additionally gives your gun like 5,000 more HP, something that is surely not annoying or dumb as fuck. Finally, you have the short circuit, which causes my brain to short circuit since it's probably the least fun concept put into the game. If you possess any projectiles, and especially if you possess only projectiles, you'll be grateful that Valve opened their ass all over your class by giving Engineer the stupidest counter available. The engineer impacts his buildings with his melee weapons, and to be honest, there's so little to give a damn about in this section. There is the wrench, the bleed wrench, the wrench that used to be the meta but is not so good anymore, and then there's the gunslinger of course, giving you a mini sentry instead of a regular one. This turns you from a sitting duck to don't give a fuck as you abandon any kind of fortified setup and waltz through the battlefield with your own might to support you. You cannot spell TF2 without T, which can stand for totally, and F standing for fun, obviously. It's more the style of everyone playing the game to run about with the gunslinger and have a rousing time not building a dispenser, a teleporter, or caring about anyone else on your team at all. Before I get to the actual meat of conversation, I'm enjoying giving a first-hand, long-time player, arrogant bastard opinion about each class's typical player base and stereotypes. There's a big two-idea thing going on. Engineer players either don't exist because they're scout players forced to play a class that is kind of like scout, or they're actual engineer mains who are certain about it being an out-of-left-field top-tier class. The people who like to use the sentry gun to rocket jump into a corner that no one goes near anyway, and those who put dispensers in locations that are 15% more tactical and 100% more useless since they aren't placed where anyone will actually want to go. In other words, this is Uncle Dane. This all relates to the gameplay experience of NG, which is either, wow, I need to do something else with my day, or damn, this class is not as good as the others. In casual, you are a completely dominant powerhouse force that can shut down literally everyone because you used your class mechanics. It's almost unreal how no one understands how to deal with the sentry gun. They will walk into it die, respawn, walk into it again, and repeat for six minutes. The only caveat to this here random success because people can't stop for one second and think in this game is that you have to spend your time playing engineer. Now, don't get me wrong, there's plenty to do to keep busy. First, you build your buildings. Happy day. Second, you need to watch for any of those there snake brain spies slithering into your territory. Find them and give them the old one-two fuck you. 
third, you need to repair the gun when it inevitably takes damage. Finally, you'll probably get bowled by an Uber at some point where I could present you a lot of advanced engineering tech, or more typically you'd get thrown out and have no choice but to relocate to a different point, and then repeat steps one through four. This is all a defense perspective, by the way. Offense uh, works like this instead. You spawn and ask yourself the question, am I a total buffoon, gibbon, ape, orangutan, chimpanzee? The answer is probably yes, so dick around and strut on by with your clown contraptions as people literally don't see you. Honestly, I'm not sure if people in this game are real, or if they are real, if they have the monitor plugged in. Actually, what am I talking about? No one's real in this game anymore. You can also just push carts, build teleporters, or generally just stand behind things. Now, where did I put my bed? Before I brush my teeth and dream of a more entertaining class, let's move into competitive. It's not very good news here. In casual, you are formidable, able to carry a team to victory. That's because people are either very slow to stop your scheming, or they're not remotely the right setup to deal with you. Engineer is 100% the team's bitch in 9v9. It's funny, because that role has a lot of competition too, but really... Firstly, you have the teleporter, very good ability for your team to get back into an advantageous location. Secondly, the dispenser is very good for your team's prolonged efforts as it gives an endless reservoir of ammunition. Finally, the sentry gun is a deterrent, baiting coordinated attacks to come your way instead of towards anyone important. You are so going to die in this format. No matter what, the engineer is gunned for, and getting that kill is mostly met with, alright, fine, that's decent enough, but at least you do have importance to the conversation at large, unlike Spy, who's practically a bonus player who you shouldn't rely on for anything. Then in 6v6, the faster game mode, with an emphasis on speed and agility, with the only reasonable choices being those with dynamic attack strategies and the ability to influence their movement in creative ways does not see the slow, stocky, setup-oriented class with no options outside of me swing the wrench and shoot gun played very often. If your team is on the back foot and pushed to the brink of defeat, you sometimes see Engineer being used to make a quick time deterrent in the form of the sentry gun. Otherwise, it's better to play something with some speed. So, here is an arbitrary rating of 5 out of 7 in casual and 2 out of 9 in competitive. I could have come up with real statements that made sense, but I doubt that it could enhance the otherwise stupid ass script I'm in the process of making and instead of coming up with something good let's just move into man versus machine the engineer is very good in this format but again mostly every class is there's something to be said that valve had to develop a strict counter to engineer stacking in the form of sentry busters which walk up to you and as long as you have any form of reaction time you can avoid their dangers feel free to mosey them into your team though that's always good for a laugh <laughs> The upgrades make your turret-based gameplay better, and you can even opt into this awful, totally garbage shit tier ability for 500 bucks, which does nothing and is very bad, but you know, it's there for flavor, we can enjoy that. Or maybe take your hard-earned money and invest it on jump height, on engineer, or fire resistance. Valve, could we have some changes to this format, please? It could be a lot of fun. Also, Valve, could we have some updates to this game? But in general, I give engineer a very big dick rubbing out of five in the mvm man versus machine game mode gotta burn three seconds for this section to be 45 seconds done so evaluation time right let me check my watch yep it's bedtime engineer loses out on securing one of my four good classes to pit against each other seats still figuring out a more eloquent way to phrase that his slowness, as well as his reliance on buildings that are not exactly brimming with benefits, is a big downside. Yeah, it is nice that he dictates some of the game by just being, but he's even worse at that than another couple of the classes. Best class in TF2 next week instead? 